Hey, well, make your way to Deuteronomy chapter 1. We'll be in the Old Testament uh, this, uh, this Sunday. We'll start 1 Thessalonians, uh, beginning of the year. The title of the message this morning is uh, Fear or Trust. Fear or Trust. I am certain within the new year, uh, many of us will be challenged in areas that we have not foreseen. And how will we respond to challenges of the new year? My hopes are is that you and I will make up our minds before the challenges occur to trust the Lord and not be fearful. If we wait until we see the trouble or the, the trials that happen in the new year to decide if we're going to be faithful or if we're going to be fearful, that might be a problem. But if we decide now that, Lord, no matter what you're doing in my life, no matter what you're going to do in the next year, I'm choosing to be faithful, to trust you. I know you have everything uh, planned for us. You're going to walk with us. However, here in our text, we're going to read about uh, God's people that have had his promises of a place of rest and peace in the land of Canaan. It was promised to Abraham. The Lord led his people in. Then they get to uh, this side of the Jordan. They see the promised land. And instead of uh, going over the Jordan and taking the promised land as the Lord has uh, encouraged them as he's laid out, they decided they didn't want to go. So today in our text, we're going to talk a lot about a lot about fear, but we're also going to talk a lot about the greatness of the Lord. So when you get to Deuteronomy chapter 1, give us an amen. amen. Look at you guys. Good job knowing your Old Testament. If you're new to following you some Jesus and you've not read your Bible before or if this is your first time, there should be one in front of you. Deuteronomy is in the Old Testament. It's, it's part of what's called the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible written by Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 1, the backdrop is... God's people have been led from Egypt, Red Sea, fire by night, cloud by day, the miracles of God. So they are right on the border of uh, entering into the promised land that God has uh, promised them for so long. There's going to be an issue or two we're going to learn about, and their issue will be of fear. Today we're going to read just a couple of verses and work our way through, and then we'll come back and work our way through the rest of the chapter. We're going to start at verses 19, and we're going to go to 21. And it says this. It says, So we departed from Horeb, and we went through all that great and terrible wilderness, which you saw on the way to the mountains of the Amorites, as the Lord our God had commanded us. Then we came to Kadesh Barnea, and I said to you, You have come up to the mountains of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is giving us. Look, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up and possess it as the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you. Do not fear nor be discouraged. Let's stop there. And the church said, amen, amen and amen. Hey, if you're a note taker this morning, we're first going to talk about the promises of God are our confidence. The promises of God are our confident confidence. Now, how exuberating, how exciting to be literally before the promised land that you've heard so often about. And this promise was given to Abraham back in Genesis chapter 17. It says this, also I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession and I will be their God. So the commandment was to come up and to possess this land of Canaan, but it, it doesn't end there. The scriptures say in verse 21, uh, do not fear and do not be discouraged. Have you noticed what fear has kept you from in your life? Have you noticed what discouragement has kept you from in your life? So here we have a million plus people moving from the Exodus right to the promised land. They can Right on the other side of the Jordan is all that the Lord has promised them. And it's interesting, the Lord says, hey, I'm giving you the land. I'm going to be with you. Uh, take possession of it. Then he tacks on in the end, um, don't be fearful and don't be discouraged. 
It sounds a lot like the Lord knows that you and I are easily sometimes discouraged. Sometimes we're easily filled, filled with fear. So what do we do when we have the promises of God, but yet we have fear in our lives? Maybe ask yourself that right now. I'm not sure what you're, what you're going through. I'm sure, I'm certain that uh, many of us are going through something that's greater than ourselves. So what do you do with your fear? Where do you turn when you're, when you're discouraged? So we have, we have this, we have God's word, and then we have life. Amen. We have these things that are happening, and then we have this. So where do we turn to in our discouragement and in our fear? We're going we're gonna to learn today that uh, God's people, unfortunately, they, they didn't turn to him in their fear and in their discouragement. Uh, God's word comforts you and I in our fear. So if you're going through a difficult time in life, I would encourage you, uh, before you even seek out help, turn to the Lord. Uh, read your Bible and see, God, what, what, what do you have to say about what I am, what I'm going through? Uh, God's word will never bring about fear in our lives. God's word will never discourage us, but it will encourage us. Uh, Jeremiah 15 is so beautiful. It says, your isn't hidden in excuses. Uh, be careful your unbelief isn't hidden in excuses. So uh, listen to this. So the Lord says, this is the land. I've already checked it out. It's for you. Go and possess it. I'll be with you. Don't be fearful and don't be discouraged. Their response to that was, uh, hey, Moses, um, let's go spy out the land first. We, we know you said the Lord is going to be with us, but you know what? Let's be safe. Let's go look at the land for ourselves. And then when we deem the land is good as the Lord says, and then we'll go. Yeah, see, we should be really careful, family, at uh, that our unbelief isn't cloaked in safety, that our unbelief isn't cloaked in, well, you know, the Lord wants me to be responsible. Now, we all know it's important to be responsible, but is your being so responsible really your faithlessness. Uh, why couldn't they have heard, the Lord's gonna be with you, this is the land I'm giving you, I've already seen the land, it's good, it flows with milk and honey, uh, I'm gonna fight for you, just go possess it. Why couldn't they say, hey, let's go? Amen. But the Bible says one by one, they're like, hey, you know what? Somebody needs to tell Moses, we need to go check out the land. All right, you go first. Hey, so Moses, hey, great speech. Um, you know what? A few of us brothers were thinking we should go spy out the land and, and check it out. Check it out first. You know, we, we've got a bunch of little ones. We have our wives. You know, we don't want to just go and take the land, as the Lord said. I mean, you know, what sense does that make? We, we need to go see for, for ourselves. Now, now, we could easily say, well, Pastor Man, that, that's responsible. That sounds great. I would have done the same thing. And as you will see, 
you would be wrong. <laughs> Welcome to Calvary Chapel, Beaumont. Because <laughs> it, 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 it sounds really, really good. It sounds safe. It sounds responsible. We're just not going to go and charge, charge the land with all of our women and children and young ones. No, no, no. We want to see for ourselves the land. Now, if the Lord says he's going to be with you, if the Lord says he's given you the land, if the Lord says he's going to fight your battles, if he's promised it to Abraham, why do you and I need to see the land? What is it that you and I are looking for that's going to make us want, want to go? And we're going to see this in just a little while. Family, they had the promises of God, but yet they still wanted to send out spies. So they had God's word they had what God has had said to them, but it wasn't enough. I wonder if you and I are sometimes just like that. We got God's word, but yet we want somebody else to say something. We want something else to transpire. Jesus, help us in this, er in this endeavor here to follow you. You'll see this quote on the screen here that we have the word of God and the spirit of God. Nothing else is coming. If the word of God and the spirit of God is not enough for us, what we're then saying is, I'm not going to move, I'm not going to follow until I feel a certain way about this issue. That's just not Bible. But we can say, well, I'm, I'm being responsible. I, I'm, I'm uh, making sure, you know, all my, you know, I's are dotted and my T's are crossed. And that might sound really religious. It might sound really responsible. But what if it's cloaked in unbelief? What if what you're saying is, I just don't want to go? That, you know what? I know, Lord, you've, you've said all these things, but if you peel back all of that layer of that onion, I'm fearful. And we're going to see here in our text. Listen to verse 23 and 24. Moses said, well, the plan pleased me well. So I took 12 of your men, one from each tribe, and they departed and they went up into the mountains and came to the valley of Eshcol, and spied it out. We've learned firstly that the promises um, of God um, are our confidence. Be careful. Our unbelief isn't hidden in excuses. Thirdly, we're going we're gonna to learn, uh, let us be pleased by what pleases God. Moses was well pleased with their safety cloaked in faithlessness. Hebrews 11 tells us what faith is. Verse 6, it says, but without what? Faith. It's what? impossible to do what please god for he who comes to god must what believe that he is and that he is a what rewarder of those who diligently seek him so if you ever going to go go hey how can i please god with my life live by faith live by faith the bible says we're to live by faith and not by sight and that means we're not to say "Ooh, this is easy i'm going to obey or this is hard I'm going to be fearful. No, we're to live by faith. Moses is pleased and maybe Moses felt some pressure. Everyone, the 12, 12 leaders came to Moses and said, hey, Moses, you know what? Slow your roll, slow down. We're not gonna just rush into the promised land. I know we've got promises and all these things. No, send us some spies. And maybe he felt, you know, a little peer pressure, but Moses sort of said, no, I don't care how all of you guys are feeling right now. We're gonna go. Why? Because the Lord said, we can take this land. This is the promises that we have from God. And, and family, if, if we don't live in faith, what we're saying is whenever we're fearful, I'm not going to move. So we move from, ooh, I'm fearful here. Let me go to the next thing. Oh, I'm fearful here. Let me try this and let me try that. And let me try this. What if the Lord says, I'm giving you this. I'm going to be with you. Walk in that. And what's the matter with saying, Lord, you know what? We're a little scared right now, but if you go with us, we're going to go. Lord, if you go with us, we will, we will go. In Hebrews chapter 11, it's a beautiful chapter of faith. If you, if you have never read it, it is wonderful. Let me read to you just a couple of verses of Hebrews chapter 11, starting at verse 30. It says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies. 
And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel the prophets. It says, who through faith they subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. It goes on. Others had trials of mockings and scourgings. They dwelt in, in caves. It says of which the world was not worthy of them. They had this great, this great faith in God. And, and be careful that as you and I are reading the text and we hear someone has great faith, that you also cannot have great faith, that somehow they're different than you and I. If you know, you've read your Bible, like Elijah called down fire from heaven. And then the Bible says that he is a man just like us. You might be going, oh my goodness, I can never do that. Well, with God, you and I can do what? All things. So be careful at saying, well, uh, that person's great, that person's great, that person's great. But you know what? What can I really do? God never says, ooh, you're wonderful. Oh my goodness. I made you and no one else is wonderful besides you. No, no. Whoever walks in faith, God does great, great things. So as we're reading our, our text this morning, we must be confronted with, how is our faith in God? I mean, is it, is it blossoming? Is it, is it growing? Or are you and I finding reasons to, to not trust? Now, I'm not saying what we go through in this thing called life isn't difficult sometimes, because oh my goodness. But who's your God? That if we, if we serve the God of the Bible, is anything too difficult for him? Does he say, man, I... I don't know what to do with that. Hmm, that's, that's just so big. So what was the, the result of their survey of the land? They, they go check out the land. Listen to verse 25. It says, they also took some of the fruit of the land in their hands and they brought it back to us. And they brought back word to us saying, uh, it's a good land which the Lord our God is giving us. Our next point we're gonna learn this morning is uh, faithlessness will be revealed. Faithlessness will be revealed. So they discover the land is good when the Lord already told them it was good. They brought back some fruit uh, from the land. Listen to what the book of Numbers says about the fruit they brought back. And you'll see it on the screen here. It says, Then they came to the valley of Eshcol, and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. Listen to this. They carried it between two of them on a pole. I mean, oh my goodness. You're, you're spying out the land. You're going, who is that? There's some grapes. Who has a pole? Right? I mean, it's like the, the land is just overflowing with blessedness. It says they also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. So they've heard the word of the Lord. They've heard the promises of God. They, they, they see the land is flowing with milk and honey. They're bringing back the evidence. It's go time, right? Let's go. Look at all this fruit. Look at all this milk and honey. Things are great. Let's go. No. Listen to verse 26 and 27. Nevertheless, you would not go up, but rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you complained in your tents and said, because the Lord, what? Hates us. He has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. What an interesting turn of events. The Lord delivered you from 420 odd some odd years of slavery, led you through the wilderness, led you to the promised land, you spy it out, you have his promises, you have the, the, the grapes you've carried back, and what you saw made you say the Lord hates us. You know, how, how, can this, how is this possible? He's given you a land you see it's flowing, you see it's great, and their response was, the Lord hates us. Hmm. You see what fear does, family? Uh, fear says, well, psh, if your God is so big, why are you going through this, this, and this? Uh, family, this is called earth. Uh, you and I are going to suffer 
uh, some to different, uh, different extremes. We're going to experience loss. Uh, we're going to have some great days. We're also going to have some challenging days. But where we're going, always great days because it's called the kingdom. So just because you and I are going through some stuff down here doesn't mean that God is somehow less great. No, God forbid that you and I would say, because what I'm going through, uh, the, the God who the Bible says the heavens of heavens can't contain him, sometimes we, we put this measureless God is in my pocket right here. They're saying, God, do you hate us? Actually, they're saying that he does, that God hates us that he brought us from Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites. I mean, what happened? They wanted to spy out the land family to see if they could easily conquer the inhabitants of the land. So when I, when I said uh, earlier, their, their, their spy out the land was their faithlessness. They wanted to spy out the land to see, ooh, we can defeat them, we can defeat them, we can defeat them. Let's go. But when they got to the land and they saw that they could not defeat the folks who were in the land, they said, you know what? The Lord hates us. Why would he do this to us? Uh, make a, a left turn from, from where you are to Numbers chapter 13. And listen to uh, Numbers 13 account of our text. We're going to read just a little bit. So if you've not done your Bible reading this week, we're going to do it this morning. Amen. Numbers chapter 13, when you get to verse 27, give us an amen. amen. So Moses is going to uh, tell us um, uh, the story that we're reading in our text from Deuteronomy. He's um, going to give us uh, maybe a fuller backdrop of this text. So Numbers chapter 13, starting at verse 27, says this. And then they told him and said, well, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Listen to verse 28, family. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are what? Strong. Strong. And the cities are fortified and large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of uh, Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land to the south. The Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Love some Caleb. Listen to Caleb. Then Caleb in verse 30, he quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against this people, for they are what? Stronger than we. Hmm. And they gave the children of Israel bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we had gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of what? Great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak that came from the giants. And we were like, what? Grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Listen to verse uh, one of chapter 14. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, listen to this, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness, listen to verse 3, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Push pause. Four hundred years plus years in Egypt making bricks. The Lord delivers you because He hears your cry, because He's got a promise for you. Delivers you. You get thirsty. First of all, He delivers. He He, he opens the Red Sea for you, right? Here, that should be enough, right? Just show me a sign. And, and, and think about this, family. If you're looking for signs to convince you of something you might be waiting for a long time. Amen. They saw the, the greatness of God and they're still doubting. I mean, he said, hey, there's a sea here. We're, we're stuck. The Lord said, hey, Moses, raise, raise your staff. The Lord said, Whew. they walk through dry ground. They're like, we're thirsty. Water from a rock. 
Oh, we're hungry, manna from heaven. Oh, we're cold, fire by night. Oh, we're hot, oh, cloud by day. The Lord did all of these miracles in their sight, delivers them with this mighty deliverance. They are at the threshold of what he's promised. They say that the Lord hates them. Then it says, let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back. You guys remember we were in slavery in Egypt, right? You want to go back to slavery because you don't want to fight for what God has already given you. You see what fear does? Fear says it's easier to go back to what I know than to press forward into what the Lord wants to show me and deliver me into. It's easy to have the slave mentality, oh, it's too tough, let's just go back. You know, following Jesus is too tough. Let's go back to the bottle. You know, following Jesus is too tough. Hey, let's go back to drugs. Let's go, let's go back to doing these things. Family, we, we, we would have to say, oh my goodness, you've seen the, the greatness of God displayed and still that wasn't enough. Listen to verse four. It says, so they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Hey, Pharaoh, we're back. Oh my goodness. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the children of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, uh, who were among them, who spied out the land, they tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, the land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Listen to the response. Verse 10, and all the congregation said to stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. So they're going, yeah, not only do we want to go back to Israel, go back to um, uh, Egypt, uh, let's stone our leaders. Like, oh my goodness. This is the, 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 the human condition when, when, when we see fear sometimes that we forget all of the, the greatness and the goodness and the mercy and the power of God because people are taller than us. It's like, Lord, you brought us all this way and they're taller than us. Lord, you brought us all this way and they're stronger than us. It's not like the Lord says, you know what? My bad. You know, what do you guys want to do now? I mean, he, he led them all, all this way, family. And their response is, let's stone our leaders and let's, let's pick a leader and, and go, back, go back to Egypt. You'll see this quote on the screen here, family. We have the promises of the Lord, but you have your doubts. Which one will you live by, promises or doubts? Maybe the better question is, uh, which have you been living by, uh, promises or, or doubts? What do you and I, what should we do? Number five, let's lead in faith and not fear. Let's lead in faith and not fear. Uh, verse 29 and 30, it says, Then I said to you, uh, do not be terrified or afraid of them, the Lord your God who goes before you, he will fight for you. Moses is encouraging them to, to trust and not, not to fear. The Lord goes before you and, and how glorious that he's going before us to, to fight for us. So victory is, is never based upon your strength or my strength. Because if that's the case, then you and, I, you and I will only fight battles we know we can win. That's why they want to spy out the land. They went to spy out the land to see if they could easily defeat the people who were on the land. But when they saw, ooh, everybody there is seven feet tall. You know, we're like five, two. You know, I, I don't know what, 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 what the Lord can do with that. You know what? I think a better plan is for us to go back to Egypt. Yeah, because we... We can't beat those guys. So what do you say? Hey, Lord, um, our strength and skill set can't beat that. But you can. We, without you, catastrophe. 
but you fighting for us and with us. Whoo, whoo, that's victorious. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And, 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 and how sad it is, family, that, that Moses, Joshua, and Caleb had to encourage the rest of the people who are crying, hey, slow down. Didn't you remember how the Lord delivered us? Remember you were hungry, you were thirsty? You remember? You remember what the Lord did? Why are you afraid of them? That's how you and I need to encourage one another. When, when people come to us and they, they need some wisdom or some, some guidance and direction, be careful at, at, at throwing gasoline on fear already. We see what fear does several years ago. Just that everything just shut down because everything is, everyone's going to perish. If we're not careful, family, fear will spread like the plague. There needs to be somebody saying, okay, wait a minute. Let's all take a deep breath. Let's look to the Lord. Let's look to the Lord. Lord, we want to bring our fear to you. <laughs> what a beautiful prayer. Lord, I've read about your greatness, but I'm afraid. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Because instead of doing that, we go, well, you know what? Let's just take a little bit more time. Let's slow it down. It'd be better to say, Lord, we are, we are just so fearful. We, we, just, we just don't know what to do, but our eyes, our eyes are upon you. Lord, this situation is greater than our resources. Um, uh, the report that I got is, is greater uh, than what my, 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 what my mind can contain. Uh, what I'm going through is greater than me, but it's not greater than you. We need to lead in faith like that. We need to, people should leave our presence going, let's do it for Jesus. Let's go for Jesus. Let's go, let's do it, and let's, let's keep on going because if we're, if we're not leading in, in faith, perhaps we're leading in fear. Ask yourself, am I leading in faith or am I leading in fear? Moses is saying, don't be terrified. Don't be afraid of them. The Lord will fight for you. He goes on and he says, the Lord will fight for you according to all he did for you in Egypt. And he says, before your eyes. He said, you clearly have seen the greatness of God. What he did there, he's going to do here. He's going to deliver you. He's going to come through. He's going to be strong in your life. You've seen him. It's not like they've never seen the greatness of God. They, family, they've seen the greatness of God and it didn't change them. I mean, like, what do you and I need to do to be convinced that we can live by faith? I mean, does God have to, hey, Beaumont, <laughs> ta-da, I'm here. We're like, okay, now I can start living by faith. And that's not going to happen. He's given us this. Amen. He's given us this. And, 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 and be, be careful of saying, well, I don't want to be like a, 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 a crazy Jesus-loving person. What if that's biblical? To be crazy for Jesus. That when, when you see something that nobody else sees, why is that called crazy? Why can't that be called faith? So, so be careful at, at, at sharing all of your, your dreams. Come on. Peter didn't say, well, you know what? There's gravity. You know, uh, well, wait a minute. 
there's gravity, but there's you. Hmm. No one can walk on water, but there's you. Hmm. That must mean you are greater than what you're standing on. So if you who are greater than what you're standing on is telling me to come out to stand where you're standing because you're greater than what you're standing on, then... faith. Isn't it crazy that we can look at the same, the same issue from two different perspectives? Some see faith and some see fear. Which one are you going to be? What are you going to see? And the choice is yours. The choice is yours on what you, what you see. And then the choice is yours on what you do with what you see. Caleb said, let's go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. You'll see this quote on the screen here. What do you see in your life with, you, with what you are facing? Do you see the Lord or do you see faithlessness? My hopes are that we will see faith in the Lord. Listen to verse 32 and 33. It says, yet for all that regarding what the Lord has done, you did not believe the Lord your God who went in the way before you to search out a place for you to pitch your tents, to show you the way you should go in the fire by night and in the cloud by day. Our sixth point is uh, you've refused what the Lord has planned for you. You refused what the Lord has planned for you. Or, or we are a picky people, aren't we? We are a picky, picky people. Uh, what if there has been times in our lives where we have refused what God wants to give us because it didn't suit us. Uh, because we wanted something, what we would consider better or different. If God gives you and I something, is there anything that's going to be better than what he gives us? No, 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 no. Because he knows everything and sees everything. So he says, hey, this is what I want to give you. I just need you to walk in what I want to give but the people of God, what they saw in the land, they didn't see God's greatness with the backdrop. They only saw giants and their enemy that was greater than them. Jesus, help us, right? Jesus, help us when you and I see that which is greater than us and we don't look to God, but we look to that thing. So if we're living life, Ooh, this is greater than me. I can't get over it. I'll, cr I'll try this. Ooh, this is greater than me. Okay, I'll try this. Ooh, and it just keeps going decade after decade after decade. This is greater than me. Let me help us all out today. Whatever is greater than us will never be greater than God. So, so stop moving to find something easier and say, let's do this. And Lord, I've been in your way, so let me step out of the way and let me have you step before it and I'll be behind you. You do you and I'll be like this going. The battle belongs to us, belongs to the Lord. 
if the battle belongs to him, maybe we should get out of his way. He wants to give the promised land to his people, but they refused to enter in. Uh, the, the story uh, ends off horrible. Uh, after the Lord uh, appeared in, in, in the text, he says, uh, none of these people are going to see the promised land. He says, you know what? Everybody turn around and go walk until this whole generation dies off besides Joshua and Caleb. So he says, you guys don't want what I want? Turn this whole ship around. They were right there. All they had to do was step in it and trust the Lord. But instead of trusting the Lord, they said, hey, let's go back to Egypt. The Lord says, oh, you want to go back? You guys are going to wander in the desert until this whole generation is passed. Now you might say, well, isn't that a bit much? Aren't you glad you're not the Lord? <laughs> he's he's long-suffering. You know, sometimes, you know, as any, any parents in here? A couple of us? There, there comes a time where, like, that's what you want. God bless you. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> God bless you, right? <laughs> Jesus, help me, right? But the Lord is long. He'll, he'll show you his greatness, and then he'll present this to you. We should look to what he has done and to who he is. Say, well, you've did it here. You can also do it here. That you, you've delivered here. You can deliver here. Think about this. Jesus has saved us because he wanted to. Not because you're good, not because you're great. We didn't wake up in the morning and go, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to give my life to Jesus. It didn't go down like that in a million years. The Bible says no one can come to the Father unless the, no one can come to the Son unless the Father draw him. So you and I were all drawn to Jesus by God the Father while we were still yet sinners. So since God has delivered many of you from drugs and alcohol and hopelessness and darkness, why can't he deliver you now? Why can't he do the, the, the same great things that he did even before we had a knowledge of who he is? And the crazy thing is, family, we have this, this knowledge of God now. And some of you just have knowledge of God, just have knowledge of God. What are you doing with that? Is your knowledge of God causing you to live more of a faith-filled life? Or is it just puffing you up? The Bible says knowledge puffs up, right? Puffs up here. Shh, 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 shh. I can finish all the pastor's words before he finishes it. Good for you. Are you living a life of faith? Are you leading in faith? When people come to you, are they leaving you going, man, the Lord is good, the Lord is great? Or do they leave you and I and go to another opinion? Let's you and I lead in faith. The result trip to God. All you and I need to do is say, hey, the Lord said, hey, here's a promised land. He's given us a promised land. Go and take it. I'm going to fight for you. I'll be with you. Don't be fearful or discouraged. Let's go. Oh, wait, there's giants in the land. What do we do? Lord, your word says that you will go before us. You will fight for us. Don't be fearful or discouraged. So, Lord, what are you going to do with the giants in the land. It's not our problem. It's the Lord's problem. Our job is to simply be faithful and trust and believe that the Lord desires to do something great. Because the opposite of that is, well, you and I live, what, comfortable lives, no giants to slay, no Red Seas to open, no water from rocks. What? what? We, we, we live safe. We see Jesus and go, oh, man. You mean I could have did this? You wanted to do this in me and that in me? That's like one of the biggest things. Like, Lord, may we not see you and go, oh, there was so much more you desired to do in me and through me. Let people call us crazy. It's a good thing to be crazy for Jesus because that's, that's biblical, right? Because when we, when we see after, after being beaten, they go and preach the word again. Paul is shipwrecked, left for dead, stoned several times, beaten several times, and what is he doing? He's about the gospel. Amen. How wonderful is that? And then here comes you and I, 2023, 
well, you know, we're just going to be kind of safe. You know, we just want to, you know, we want to be responsible. Be careful that that's not saying, no, oh, I just don't believe. Jesus, help us to be and to live what you've purposed for us. That when we face giants, we face it with you. When we have your promises, all we need to do is walk it out. And then when we're afraid, we openly confess, Lord, I'm scared right now. I'm scared. But your word says, perfect love cast out all fear. What am I going to believe? The eternal word of God or my passing emotions. Family, be careful that your passing emotions don't somehow try to cloud this out. No, no, this needs to be all right here. All right here and all right here. Jesus, your word. What do I say? Your, your word, I found it and I ate it. It was a joy and the rejoicing of my heart that your word is a, is a, a double-edged sword, two-edged sword. It, it pierces between uh, the marrow and bone and, and joint. It's a discerner of thoughts. That's why it's important for us to read our Bibles because sometimes the Holy Spirit says, bam, that's for you. You're having a little faith problem right now. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading our word and keep trusting. Think about this. God is holy, righteous, perfect, just, beautiful, and so many more. What has he ever done for us to go, yeah, you know what? I'm not too sure about this Jesus guy. It's our safety. It's our safety and our fear of the unknown that keeps us in this sometimes infantile state. God wants to grow you and I into some some godly men and women, that he would be our strength. And what a beautiful day to ask the Lord for that very thing. God, be my strength in my fears. Jesus, be my light in the darkness. Be my hope when I feel hopeless. Jesus, I need you to be my Lord, that, that my life, which is actually your life, is led by you and filled by you and empowered by you, that, that, that when, I, uh, when I face giants in my lives, just maybe you've sent them. The Lord didn't send them into the land and say, wait until they get there. <laughs> They're going to see the Amalekites and the Hittites. They're going to see the, the, the sons of Anak there. They're going to see some giants. Everybody watch what they do. The Lord already knew what they would face and he sent them anyway. But he sent them with his promise. He knows what you and I will face. He has sent it and he has sent us. But we have, we have this family. We're not alone. Hold on and cling to this. There might be a battle or two. There might be some blood. But the Lord is victorious. The Lord is the Lord of hosts. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word this morning. Wonderful is your name. Uh, you know the, the condition of, uh, of our hearts. Sometimes we are just so, so fearful and, and uh, sometimes what we encounter in life seems to almost debilitate us at times. And Lord, forgive us for, for not clinging to your word more. Who, who have we in heaven but you, Lord? You're perfect and righteous and holy and just. Great, great is your name. Great are you, and yet you've redeemed us. We have this, this new spirit in us. Give us some of what Caleb has, and I'm certain it's already in us. We just have to walk it out. Where we no longer react to what we see or hear because we have the promises of God. Lord, I guess, you, well, I guess I, you know what I'm trying to say, Father, is that we help us to live a life that's, that's full of faith. It doesn't have to make sense to us, but just a life of, of, of hope, a, a life of trust in your word. If we don't trust your word, what, what else can we trust? Lord, your word says you want to do exceedingly abundantly above everything that we can ask that we ask everything according to the power that's at work in us. Or we just 
We just want to live by faith and trust you. Family, whatever you, you're going through right now, you know it and the Lord knows it. He's given you his word. Don't fear, family. Trust. Everything will work out so Jesus will be glorified. Jesus will be glorified by what you are going through. Walk in faith for the glory of Jesus and him alone. It doesn't need to make sense to anybody but you and Jesus. As long as Jesus is leading you, you go, you do, you say, you trust, you hope, and you believe because your Savior is leading you. And God forbid, family, that you and I would be on the cusp of what God has wanted for our entire lives, and yet you don't want to fight, so you turn back to the old person you used to be. You know that person. What God wants to give you and I sometimes will come at a cost. Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ, but nevertheless, I live. In the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Following Jesus is the privilege of our lives. Let's follow him well, family. Let's follow him in faith. And if your faith is weak, find another brother or sister and walk with them. May their coal from the altar of the Lord heat up your coal. Amen. Jesus, do a, a great work in all of us. And, and Lord, you, you know the struggles. You know the issues that are here in this room. We want to recommit those to you. But this time in faith, say, Lord, my eyes are different. Your word says this about my struggle. I'm going to trust your word. I'm no longer going to let fear guide me, arrest me, debilitate me. I'm going to let your word arrest me and guide me and fill me and speak to me. Yours is the victory. If you're here this morning or you're outside or online, I want to tell you Jesus has a plan for your life. Life's not perfect. It's going to be painful uh, from time to time. But Jesus is greater than anything that you will encounter. The Bible tells us that this present suffering is not to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Follow Jesus. If you are not a follower of Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity right now to receive Jesus as your Savior. I want to lead you in a prayer of repentance and belief in the gospel. And if you desire Jesus, he's not asking you to go fix your life because you cannot. He's not asking you to go make yourself holy because you cannot. Jesus is asking and has asked all of us to turn to him, turn from our sin and to turn to him. And he is the one who will do the cleaning and the transforming. And if you desire Jesus to save you, pray this prayer along with me. Father in heaven, I need Jesus to save me from my sins. Jesus, I turn to you from my sin today. Be my Lord and be my Savior. All of me, I surrender to you. I believe your gospel. I ask these things in Jesus' name. And the Bible says if you said that prayer, you are what's called being, you're born again, you are a new creation. All things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. If you're online, click the link that said I just gave my life to Jesus and we'll reach out to you tomorrow just to touch base to make sure you're doing good. We'll give you a Bible if you, if you need one. Lord, thank you for loving us on our journey. Continue to draw us and to call us closer and closer to you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen, amen and amen.